Um, so I've just got these old brushes. I have a large, a medium, and a small. As long as you have at least those, you're good. A large, a medium, and a small. The painting that we're gonna do today is called Heavenly Denver. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up our biggest brush and we're just gonna coat it with water, coat our canvas with water. And we're doing that because in the West, it's really dry, especially when it's cold like this and the, um, the furnace is on a lot, then the air gets really dry. So when the air is dry, the paint gets dry. And so we wanna make sure that our canvas is moist enough that the paint won't stick to it too quickly, that we still have time to move things around a bit while we're painting. So just one coat of water all the way around, okay? Awesome. So I have the brushes, I have the canvas, my canvas is wet. We're gonna be using just a few colors today. We're actually not gonna be using yellow, uh, but you um, might have that out. And if you do, I noticed that there are kids painting as well. My recommendation is let them do whatever they want, right? If they wanna paint different colors in it or paint something different, um, of course the parents can guide them in that way, but the yellow's there if they wanna do something different or if any of you wanna do something different. We're just gonna be using black, blue, red, and white. Okay, so the um, plan for this painting is that we are going to do the background first. So blue and white, and then we're gonna make some purple and some red. We're gonna do all that first, okay? And that's really probably the biggest part of the painting, believe it or not. And then we'll come in and we'll put some black in the sky and then we'll come in and put in our buildings, okay? So just know that this background takes a little bit of time to get it pretty. Um, and that, you know, it might not look pretty at first, but, if, but trust me, it'll get there, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick up my largest brush and I'm gonna put it in blue paint. And I'm going to start to make some blue scribbles blue scribbles. And I'm going to put my blue scribbles uh, down about a hand span because it's really going to be in this area. But then also some up in here too. And then some down in here and here, just kind of all over. I'm not picking up more paint as I do that. I'm just using that one scoop of paint. And then I'm not gonna pick up any more. I'm just going to mess up the ones I have. I know that sounds crazy. This whole background's gonna sound crazy. You'll just have to trust me, okay? I'm just messing up what I did. I'm not covering the whole canvas with blue though. I'm leaving some white spaces in between. And if at any time I'm going too fast, um, just remember I'm gonna give you breaks, okay? So that you can catch up if you get a little behind. So um, don't worry, but you, uh, you can also, somebody can unmute and tell me, hey, we need more time if you want, okay? So I put on those splotches. I didn't use a lot of paint. I just used a little paint. And, and then I messed them up. But I, I do need to leave some white parts. It kind of looks like a blue leopard. Don't keep adding more blue. We want it to be a thin layer, not a thick layer, okay? And we want these to be messy and not perfect circles or perfect squares. Just kind of messy, messy, messy. 
messy and light. It's like a blue Dalmatian. Remember to keep it thin, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and give you two more easy steps. And then after those two easy steps, then I will um, I'll give you time to catch up and take a break, okay? And visit with each other. Just making sure you guys can hear me okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick up, um, you can use the same brush or a smaller flat brush. It doesn't really matter. Just if you use the same brush you used before, make sure it's really clean, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some white paint and around the sides of those splotchy areas, I'm gonna wiggle on some white paint. And I know that seems kind of silly, this, I'm kind of framing it in, but I just wanna soften those edges a bit with some white paint. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. It's just kind of softening the edges of those little blobs. And then, then after I get about half of those on, I'm gonna crisscross stroke the edges. I'm not gonna keep picking up more white paint. I'm just trying to make some areas mix with white. I want this whole painting to be really splotchy and with, a, with light areas of paint. Just letting, letting that white paint just mix around the edges and soften. So mix and soften. I'm not gonna pick up more white paint, I'm not. I'm just gonna let my dry brush just mess up any areas that are have hard lines. And I'm just gonna try to soften any hard or solid areas with a dry brush, with my dry brush. I know that this looks crazy right now. It, it's gonna look better soon, I promise. Just softening any white paint, just kind of smearing it around, but I'm not picking up more white paint. I'm just, just using a dry brush. I am gonna pick up some water and knock off most of it, just so my brush is wet but not drippy. And I'm going to use that wet brush just to soften any areas. Notice the kind of strokes I'm using, they're crisscrossy strokes, crisscross, like X's. I'm just softening and what I'm trying to do is create some like cloudy, reflections of color, very muted, very soft looking. Just painting with a little bit of water, a drop of water on my brush. 
just to smooth and soften these blotches. And when my brush is too dry that it's not working, I'll pick up another drop of water and I'll knock it off. And I'll keep doing the same thing until I've softened any hard lines or dark blue areas, just making them whisper soft. It's almost like a cloud flew in in front of them. I still need to be able to see color, but I also see this wispy, smoky white. And we're gonna do one more color and then I'm gonna give you guys time to visit, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and show you this color and I know that you're probably not ready to keep going yet, but I'm just gonna show you and then I'm gonna give you time, okay? So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my white and a little bit of my red and I'm gonna make a pink. Not too dark pink kind of like cotton candy. If it looks too much like Pepto-Bismol, you might wanna start over, but a little bit like cotton candy, okay? And then I'm gonna come in some of these white areas and I'm going to very softly whisk in some pink, but not everywhere, not everywhere. and messy, keep it messy, okay? And then I'm gonna put my brush in the water. Then I took my big brush and I put a drop of water on it, just a drop of water. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with, that I do with that blue. I'm gonna soften and kind of spread this pink around so it overlaps with the blue. But I didn't pick up more paint. I'm not using a lot of paint, just a little bit. And hopefully, this pink is gonna mix a little bit with the blue. What I want are kind of like pink clouds and blue clouds just floating around the sky together like they're friends, you know, like they're just hanging out. They're mixing a little bit. I can still see pink, I can still see blue, but all of it is cloudy. And when your brush gets too dry, just take and get another drop of water and use that. But make sure you knock off any extra drops so you don't have drips. And notice how fast I'm moving my hands. I want to keep this looking, um, I want to work it so it's soft before it gets too dry. That's why I'm moving my hands so fast. All right, I'm gonna give you guys time to um, catch up to this step. We'll come back in and put a little bit of purple too. But for now, just go ahead and catch up to where I am. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna mix, a, we're gonna make a little bit of purple. And I'm gonna do that by picking up, well, actually you can use your pink that you already used and add a little more red and a little more blue and then stir those in together. We don't need to make a lot, just a little. I'm gonna go uh, make sure we don't get any feedback, one sec. But just go ahead and stir in some more red and some more blue into your pink and you'll have purple. So enough red and blue added to that pink that it looks like purple. All 
All right, so once you have a purple you can live with and that you're okay with, uh, we're gonna go ahead and find some little white areas and put in some purple. Not everywhere, just where you want it. And if you have too much on your brush, you can go ahead and clean off the excess and then clean your brush. And then you know what to do with the next step, right? You're gonna use a clean brush, a clean dry brush to move that paint around. And if you need to pick up a drop or two of water to help you, then go ahead. And again, so we're just making some purple splotches this time. And messy is good, messy is good. I'm not covering all my blue, I'm not covering all my pink, I'm just making another color and then messing it up real good. Don't add too much paint, okay? Make sure your brush is clean when you go back and just try to feather it like this, like you're using a feather duster. You have a dusty shelf and you use a feather duster. It's that same kind of flicking it back and forth real lightly. So if you have any areas that you don't like, this is how you take care of it. Put a brush or two on a clean, a drop of two or water on a clean brush, and then just mix that drop or two of water with a drop or two of white paint. Just so you get a very, very, very thin white paint on your brush. Real thin, real thin. And then you can cut, you can go in and put this really, really light coat of white over anything that you don't like. And it's just adding a little bit of white back in, but we're putting it in the spots that we don't like and it'll just mess it up and then we don't have to worry about how we didn't like that part. But it's such a light amount of white, it's almost like we're just putting in a liquid cloud right over any parts we don't like or we want to make it look softer. It's like we're just putting in a cloud. And I told you this background was not an easy background, right? It's, it's most of the painting. It's not an easy painting, but you guys, a lot of you have been here before and um, you're, you're gonna do great. And even if you haven't, it doesn't matter, just have fun. All right, I'll let you catch up with that. Um, and 
Um, make sure that you have some spots that have a little bit of white in them. Um, and I mean, we have blue, we have pink, we have purple. We need a couple of spots with just a little bit of white. So if you don't have any of those at all, you can, you can take that really thin white that you used before and just put in a couple of spots. See how there's a couple of spots in this middle area? So I can just put in a couple more spots if I don't have any left, just so that there's a little bit of sparkle up in there. And if you already have some white spots in that general area, then you don't have to do that. But I just want to make sure that we didn't blend away all our white. Just want a little bit of white to be shining through, just a little. And then I think we're going to just go with what we have, right? You can always come back in and and tweak any part after we uh, put on the other stuff. And a lot of this is going to be covered with dark sky and buildings anyway. But I just want to give you that one last chance. Make sure you had a little bit of white in there somewhere. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a medium brush, not a big one, because I want to go slow and carefully with this next step. I'm going to only pick up a little bit of black paint. So here's the thing, make sure you only use a little, okay? Just a little. And I'm gonna come up here in the corners and I'm gonna put in some black. And I'm gonna come up here in the other corner, put in some black. And then I'm gonna paint the top of my canvas way up here. Now the reason I'm painting it way up here is that if you paint your painting around the sides as you go, then you don't need to put it in a frame and you'll save yourself a lot of money. Yay. I don't know about you, but I like saving money. All right. So I am painting around the tops and the sides down to about there, right about there. Just painting the sides, painting the side here too. Okay. Now I didn't pick up more black paint yet. What I'm going to do is that wet paint in the corner, I'm just going to use it to bring a little bit of that wet paint down until it becomes dry paint. I want to, here's the, the reason why I'm telling you to go um, not pick up too much paint. This background still shows some of those colors behind it. Can you kind of see there's a little bit of red and blue back here? A little bit of red and blue. So we don't want it to be just solid, really dark black, okay? We want to take our time and go easy on it, okay? So I'm going to take my time and I'm just picking up a little bit of paint, a little bit of paint, and I'm going to bring it down a little bit lower on each side, a little bit lower on that side, little bit lower on this side. Don't use too much paint, okay? We don't have to, um, we don't have to leave paint um, showing. We can come back and put those in over the black if we mess it up. So if we uh, put on too much, so don't worry about it. But I just don't wanna put on too much because I want it to look like these colors kind of blend into the sky a bit. So I'm only, when I pick up paint on my brush, I'm only picking up a little at a time. I'm crisscrossing. And I'm just not gonna, um, not gonna pick up too much because I, I wanna go slow enough that I don't put on too much black paint. And it's really easy to put on too much black. All right, so I've got some on there. And notice it's, it's only going down. Um, now you have a smaller canvas than me, so mine's going down. If I squeeze my hand together like that, that's how far it's coming down. On yours, since your canvas is a little smaller, 
you know, only go three or four fingers down with your black, okay? And then I'm gonna pick up my water and I'm gonna get a drip of water, knock it off, and then I'm gonna smooth that out a bit, just like we smoothed it before. And just let it kind of mix. It's almost like now there's a, the black sky is coming in like clouds too. And I don't want it to be in a straight line. I want it to be irregular, okay? And you can pick up more black paint um, and put it where you need it, but just go easy, go easy. You have way more black paint and way more of every color than you actually need for this painting. So we just wanna take it easy, not overdo it, and definitely not bring our paint down too low, okay? because we want this area to sparkle and shine. We're gonna put stars in there. This is the area right in here where my handle's going like a windshield wiper. That's gonna be like sparkle and shine area. So we don't wanna cover it all with black. Just some of it. And you can use your brush like a like dry brush it on. This, this is called dry brushing, this is what I'm doing. I'm using my brush when it's dry and I'm just scribbling on that black. That also works. It's just not a lot of paint. You pick up a drop or two of water that, that will also help smooth those edges on your black too. The reason we're putting it on really thin is we want it to dry quickly, the black. We don't want it to um, take a long time to dry. So it's a thin coat of black. And remember, irregularly shaped, kind of like wavy. Not too perfect, nothing's too perfect about this. Just remember, don't go down too low, okay? If you're painting with someone else, you know, maybe give each other feedback, some nice feedback about, you know, where you're stopping. I always like to, when I'm painting with a friend, I always like to ask them, hey, how does this look? If it's a nice friend, if it's not a nice friend, then I don't ask them. Now mine looks icky up close. See that? Look how icky that looks up close. Icky, that's an artwork I just made up. That really isn't, isn't good up close. So don't worry if yours looks messy. That's okay. We're going to fix that in just a second. If you get the black on the top, then clean your brush really well, okay? This background is the hardest part of the painting. It's a lot. The buildings are, are gonna be easier. They're a little bit tricky, but easier than the background. Fewer steps for sure. All right, after my, you, you don't have to do this yet because I know your black is probably still wet. Here's how you tell if it's wet. If you look at it, and it's dull, like, uh, like your shirt um, or your pants, then it's dry. But if you see shiny areas when you move it around, that means it's still wet. This is still wet, because when I move it around in the light, I can see shiny areas. Another way is when you feel it on the back, the canvas feels colder in the areas that are still wet. And then another way is if, it, if you pick it up and wipe it on someone and they scream it was probably wet, but I don't recommend that way, not at all. Especially not if you're living with that person for the rest of the pandemic. You don't wanna make them mad. When the black is dry, 
then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up just a little bit of paint, blue paint. And I'm going to put that over those black areas and then bring them down into the other area. And I can do that with each of the colors that I used before. And it's really, but it has to be dry. It has to be dry to be able to do that. And I'm gonna scratch, scratch it, overlapping, overlapping where the black ended and the colors start. And this is dry brush. See that dry brush, it's that scrubbing with a dry brush, overlapping. So these colors are more solid, more brilliant at the top. But I'm just, make sure your black is dry before you do this, okay? And then I'm just scritch scratching, scritch scratching like this, scrubbing those colors, overlapping where the black ends. So what that does is it makes it, so that you can't really tell where the black ends. Not so much. And you can use the pink or red up here on the black and cover up any areas that aren't covered up there. That just adds some interest but I'm just scratching it on. It's just covering up any white areas left in my dark. Because when I put this red over the black and then I scratch it, scratch it, scratch it with a dry brush, you can't see it very well, but you can see it a little and that's what we want. But make sure your black is dry before you do that, okay? Here, I think when it makes a little pink, and I know this is a lot of steps for this, it's a lot, but it's gonna pay off because your sky is gonna be so pretty and your friends are gonna be like, wow, that sky looks hard. And yeah, kind of is. So here I'm gonna put in a little purple over where that, that's a little too bright, over where those overlap. So you can use any of the colors we used originally, for this overlapping area. Where the black ends and the color starts, that's where we're putting in these colors to overlap. This is too bright. Put some blue over that. So there is a little bit of color on top of that black sky but mostly we just wanna make it so we can't really tell where that black starts and stops. And I'm scribbling it. All right. Basically what we've done is we made our sky darker. We've just made it nice dark sky, but it doesn't just end in a black line. That's what we were going for. We don't want it to just end in a black line. And you can clean your brush or switch to another one that's cleaner. Just gonna make sure that that line is so foggy. By using my dry brush and scratching it that I can't really tell where things start and stop. But again, don't do this if, you're, if your black's not dry, only when it's dry. See how it looks like there's a row of color underneath the dark sky, like the bottoms of clouds or something? And I know this has been a, a hard background to do. It is a little bit tricky and you guys have done a great job. After your black, be sure you, if you are using that same brush, Make sure you really, really cleaned your brush before you switch to the lighter colors. And then I'm gonna just go over this one more time with one drop of water on a very clean brush. Just make sure anything that's hard, any hard lines look softer.
I call this feathering. You know, it's called blending. Doesn't matter what you call it, just, just so it softens any hard lines. We don't want any hard lines. We want it to be where someone says, oh, I don't know where that starts and where it stops. And if you mess up, remember what you can do is just take a clean, clean brush, couple drops of water, couple drops of white paint. And when these are dry, you can add a little bit more white back in, but that's if you make a mistake. So if you don't make a mistake, you don't need to do that. If you don't like what you did, you don't need to do that. But always make sure things are dry before you try to fix them. When I was young, we used a lot of correction fluid. And I don't even know if kids use that anymore because everyone is just on a typewriter. But correction fluid is like this white stuff that comes in a little bottle, you get it at the dollar store, um, and you can cover up mistakes when you're writing a letter or an envelope. And uh, so white paint can be like that, but you have to let whatever it is underneath that you don't like dry before you use it. All right. So we have spent a lot of time on this background and I bet you guys wanna to get to the buildings, right? So I'm gonna let you catch up. Make sure you get up and look at your painting from about five feet away. Here's the thing, if you have ever been to the Museum of Natural History or the Modern Art Museum and seen, actually the Art Museum, um, or if you've traveled to a place where you've seen original art like um, Monet or Van Gogh, um, or one of the Impressionists, right? The Impressionistic paintings, um, those paintings look terrible up close. They look terrible. But when you back up about five or 10 feet away, that's when they look really pretty. And so this is an Impressionistic painting. It's not, this sky isn't exactly right, but um, from five or 10 feet away, that's where it looks the best. So just remember that. It's not supposed to look perfect this close. If we went to a museum and we stood one foot away from our what we were looking at, the guards would get very nervous and tell us to back away, right? It's the same thing when you're looking at your own art. Make sure that you stand back far enough so that you can really appreciate it because you can't appreciate it if you're too close. Nothing down here is gonna matter much because this area is gonna be covered with buildings. but we're not going for perfect, we're going for mostly good. If it's mostly good, then we're good. What I'm doing now is I'm just taking the stick, part of my brush, just the stick, I'm dipping it in white paint, and then I'm putting stars all over in the top half of the painting. I don't know who pens. Some are big and some are small because every time I dip it in, I can get four or five pops with this paint on the stick. And sometimes stars come in little clusters like constellations. So maybe there's a few that are hanging out together as friends. So I'm just touching from that stick, I dip my stick in white and then I'm just touching and making dots all over the top half of my canvas, the top half. And these are the stars in the sky. So um, some will have little clusters or three or four together like constellations. And then some are hanging out, you know, they're like people and some are way off on their own, but just kind of all over. Put some on the top, on the sides, just, Beautiful stars in a sparkly sky. Now it's starting to come together, right? Do you see it?
if I push it up. Put some down in this middle area too. Definitely lots on the black, but some in this middle area too. I'm gonna take my tiniest little detail brush, just a teeny tiny one. And some of these stars, I'm gonna make sparkle. And the way I do that is I'm gonna first draw a little circle and then I'm gonna pull down and flick, flick down. I'm gonna flick across, flick across and then flick up and make some of those stars sparkle. You can do it like a little plus sign or a cross or you can even do it as an asterisk, like make some diagonal sparkles out of it too. And you can put as many or as few of those sparkly ones as you want. Probably two or three would be good, but if you really like them and you wanna do a few more, go for it. They just add some sparkliness to your sky. Oh, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, that one went to town. So if you like the sparkles, you can do as many as you want. So a little dot, flick up, flick down, flick out, flick out. That's the basic. And then if you want to do it from the diagonals, that's extra. Do something really fun and kind of crazy. You can. I like to settle my finger on a dry part just to steady my hand. And what you can do if you want is you can take, put a little dot and then flick up and that becomes a shooting star. That's kind of fun. The last time I painted this painting um, was actually, we had a family in here um, and they, uh, they actually lost a family member and um, they said their grandfather had, um, Denver was his favorite city. And so they painted heavenly Denver for him um, as a way to uh, remember him. And uh, so this painting is special to me in that way. It's a, it's a nice tribute to, to a great city. Later on, after we put on the buildings and your paintings dry and on another day, if you do have any glitter at home, you, you know, you can always um, put on a little glitter. Um, use a little clear glue and some sprinkle some glitter in the sky. That actually looks really pretty. Or if you come in here to paint after we're reopened after the pandemic and you wanna bring your painting in, um, I'll give you some glitter you can put on it. I'd be happy to do that. It just adds another little nice touch to it, to the top. You can see some of it sparkling here. It's pretty with or without it. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the buildings. 
And um, because I know uh, the kids are waiting and you can always go back and put in more stars later if you need more time. But I just wanna give you the general idea of this painting of those buildings. Do you see how, if you imagine my brush as a windshield wiper, do you see the shape of the buildings kind of in general? This one's short, but besides that one, the taller ones are in the middle and the shorter ones on the end. This one's kind of an exception to that rule, but in general, we want the buildings to be taller in the middle, mostly, and shorter on the sides. Cause this is like downtown and this is, you know, the other parts of town that where the buildings aren't quite so high. So I'm gonna start one building at a time and I'm going to, when I need to, I'm gonna steady my hand. I'm also gonna use a really tiny brush. I'm gonna steady my hand with my pinky. And it's hard to make a perfect straight line so you don't have to. Don't worry about it. You can always fix it. But I'm gonna pull down a line as straight as I can, but if it's not straight, don't worry, you can go back and fix it later. And then I'm going to come across and then I'm gonna pull down. So this is kind of in the middle. So this building's pretty tall. And I'm just gonna use this tiny brush and I'm just gonna use it to outline, to draw in the building shapes. So the buildings are gonna be right next to each other we're not really worried about sidewalks or parking lots. We're just looking at it as a skyline and we're just gonna put the buildings next to each other. Even if the real buildings in Denver have parking lots and driveways and streets in between, we're gonna not really pay attention to those. We're just gonna forget about those. And we're just gonna make it so that they all look like they're together. Because before I said that, you probably didn't even notice that they aren't, that, that I didn't have room for sidewalks and streets in there. And so they're all rectangles, but some are wider than others and some are taller than others. Some are short and skinny like this one right here. And some are taller, some are fatter, some have another building right next to it that's giving it a funny shape like that. Um, and the, some are wide, some are tall, some are thin, just so long as they're all different. And then here's that short one stuck in the middle of downtown. Not sure what that's about, must be an older building. And we're really not gonna pay attention to exactly which buildings they are, but later, after we put on a bunch of buildings, we're gonna come back and we're gonna give this one a top that looks like a real building in Denver. Then we're gonna come back and give this one this top that looks like a real building in Denver. Keeping in mind what I said, that they're mostly taller in the middle and mostly shorter at the end. Some are skinny, some are fat. And they're all different heights. You can go back and fix corners, make them, you know, straighter. You don't have to worry about it now. But I'm also going to fill in the inside of each one with black. So all of that hard work making all those pretty splotches down here, we're covering them. I recommend putting the paint on thinly. So if your paint is starting to dry out and get like peanut butter, Add a little bit of water and stir that in because you want it to be like, um, to put it on a thin coat, you want it to be like motor oil or like thin pancake syrup. Um, so you can always add a, a couple of drops of water to thin it out. Maybe not thin pancake syrup or like a warm honey. That kind of like thin will help you put on a thin coat um, so it doesn't take a really long time to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do the tops of the buildings. And I know you're, some of you aren't ready and that's okay. Um, and some of you might not even wanna do the tops, but this one right here, the cash register building, when you put that one on, it really says 
Wow, this is Denver. So I wanna for sure show you that one. And whoever wants to do that can. So I'm gonna pick one of my tall buildings. It doesn't really matter which one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some black paint on a small brush, right? Cause I'm gonna do it um, carefully. And I'm going to steady my hand with my pinky. I'm gonna come up way above a comfortable reach from where I have my pinky. And right in the middle here, I'm gonna draw a line up. A line up, that's the first step. And then from that line, I'm going to curve backward and down. And it's gotta be a curve. And if, it's, if you didn't do a curve the first time, you can go up a little higher and turn it into a curve. See that curve there, the soft curve? That's the back of it. And then I'm gonna rest my pinky somewhere else and I'm gonna come down about halfway from where I made that line. Oh, there's good and I'm gonna curve down to touch the other side. And then I can fill that in. So that's called the cash register building. I'm sure it has another name. I think it's on 17th. I'm not sure you can see it from 17th. Can't really remember where it is. Maybe you guys know, I don't remember. But anyway, everybody knows that building. They've been to Denver. That's the cash register building. That's what we call it here. Anyone know the real name of it? Just make sure that this is a curve and that's a curve. And then this little teeny tiny one in here, it's basically just a line straight up. It's fatter at the bottom, so more pressure at the bottom. And then I'm gonna come up and then it's just thinner so it goes to a point in the middle. And I don't know if that's like a, you know, some kind of a TV or radio station antenna. I don't really know what that is. I have no idea. I can't remember. Uh, honestly, I don't even remember like seeing that. But anyway, I think that's one of them. Then this one right here, it's got a top on it. So it looks like the hat, the building has a little hat, like a little box hat. So one of your medium sized buildings or tall, it doesn't really matter. You can just put on another smaller rectangle right on top. They used to call these when ladies in uh, those old movies, I think they called them pillbox hats. Thing. Just a neat little hat. Sometimes in England, when they, uh, the royalty, they wear those little hats and they stick a feather on it or something. So we have the cash register building. Then we have this, uh, whatever this is called, pointy building. Then we have this pillbox hat building. And then the last one I'm gonna show you is this weird thing here that looks like a beret. I think that is a condominium complex, somebody told me. And you can pick any building and put that on it. We're not really, this isn't really an accurate version of downtown because we don't know exactly where these buildings are, but it doesn't matter. When you're painting a skyline, as long as you have at least one really iconic building, then people go, oh, I know that building. I know that city. So I'm gonna put that one here. It kind of looks like it has a beret on its head. And I'm gonna put that here. So I'm just going to steady my finger. I'm hoping you can see me okay. Okay, let me move that closer. I'm gonna steady my finger 
and then I'm going to make a line going down, like the shape of a banana, kind of, or mm, I don't know how to describe that. <laughs> An eyebrow pointing down, I guess. And then I'm going to fill it in up above. And you can make the building wider if your banana hat isn't perfectly underneath it. But there you have the most basic Denver um, iconic buildings. And if you want to mix it up, you can even, I'm not saying that I know that this one actually exists, but you know what, who knows? Maybe there's one in there with a rectangular roof. No one's going to argue. They're going to see this. They're going to, well, hey, that's Denver. If you know of a building, if you live in a building that isn't on here, feel free to put the roof on. And you know what? I've painted this painting with people before, and sometimes they turn it into even a different city. So do whatever you want, but that's how you do the basic ones, okay? But for the windows, all the windows are are just little lines. That's all they are, just with a teeny tiny brush and little lines. But here's the thing. We're not filling in every building everywhere with the lines. I might have a cluster of two lines or a cluster of three lines or maybe some going straight across, but they're not gonna be everywhere in the building because this is at night and these are mostly office buildings. Yes, yeah, some are condos um, or apartments, but mostly they're office buildings. And so there are some lights on, maybe someone's having a late meeting or working late or, you know, someone's, taking out the trash or whatever, but all the buildings aren't gonna have all the lights on at night. It just wouldn't make sense. So I'm putting, you know, maybe 10 or 12 in each building. Maybe the little buildings, maybe they only get six or seven. You can decide how many. And then I'm also spreading them around in the building. And some are going down. Maybe there's two in a row, maybe there's someone you know, at their desk and their copy machine or whatever. I haven't worked in a corporate kind of building for a long time. I'd imagine they still have copy machine rooms. But I'm not, I'm not putting a lot of them in each building, just a little here and there. Those are for those poor souls who have to work late or maybe somebody's having a party in their condo and all of them are lit up across that floor. We don't know. I'll just make it up. Hold on. Little clusters of lights. And I'm just using white, my smallest brush and white. Give it a little 
I had someone one time project a Batman light on it. That was cool. We had someone else when we were doing a skyline put Godzilla on top of one of the buildings. Or maybe it was King Kong, actually. The last step, I'm just pulling that brush through. You could do it in white or red, it doesn't really matter, but I kind of pulled it through both. And I'm just gonna put my initials in the bottom right-hand corner. So if you do what I did, someday when I see your painting in the Denver Art Museum, I'm gonna know exactly who you are. <laughs> 